everybody. I'm sure you know exactly who it is by now. I introduce myself in every single video, but it's me, Drew. And today we have another episode of What Would Drew Do? Now, if you've been living under a rock for just a little bit, you might not know about this series, but it is one of my favorite ones here on the channel. And it's where I help you guys out with your decor dilemmas. Before going into more detail, I do want to mention that a part of today's video is kindly sponsored by Capital One Shopping, which I am extremely excited about because this is going to be an amazing extension that you guys need. I'll talk about it in just a little bit. But in this series, I actually share with you guys how I take some of your spaces and how I would transform them. So things I would change, paint colors, furniture, design, and basically give it kind of a virtual makeover with a full on render at the end. So these videos are pretty intense to actually set up and edit, but I absolutely love making these and actually sharing with you guys spaces that you submit to me. So let's actually go ahead and dive on into our first makeover, which was sent over by Lone Fox family member, Mariah. Mariah sent over a full email of information, but she also sent over a video introducing herself and sharing the space. So I'm gonna pop that up for you guys. Hi, Lone Fox. Thank you for featuring us in your video today. My name is Mariah and I'm so excited to be on your channel. Uh, basically my situation is I moved in with a long-term boyfriend. Of course I thought it was gonna work out, but it really didn't. I lost a sense of myself in that relationship and so I decided to pack up the car and get out of here. We're moving to Tennessee, uh, me and Milo, and I really just want change. I shaved my head, I literally shaved my head, and I want my space to represent the journey that I'm about to go through. I'm really inspired by the Japandi style and I like the black metals. I was thinking of getting a cloud couch or a soda ham in white from Ikea. Whatever you say, I can do it. I hope you can make something work out of this 500 square foot apartment. Uh, but thank you for featuring me. <laughs> First off, Mariah, you are absolutely beautiful. Your new hairstyle too looks absolutely amazing. You have such a good face. So I feel like you can probably pull off a lot of hairstyles. And also we are going to make this space nice and calming, very wobby sabi japandi style that was actually a huge trend that i talked about in my last video if you guys didn't watch that i talked about design trends the first thing i noticed in this space is kind of a small sliding glass door at the back of this living room area and i feel like it just looks so small on that wall so i wanted to make this more of a focal and i figured we can turn this into a curtain wall which i love the look of i also think it adds a lot of texture interest and it makes the space just look a lot more expensive on a budget so what i would suggest doing is having a curtain rod go all the way across the ceiling of this entire wall and then hanging some heavyweight natural fiber curtains like a cotton curtain or a linen curtain on either side and do quite a few panels maybe two to three on each side and actually cover that entire wall because it's going to give you kind of this fabric texture on the wall but it's going to make the window actually look like it's extending behind those points now that was one main focal point but another focal point i see in this room is the rug it really does take up a large space there's quite a bit of floor space in this area so i wanted to swap out the rug and i actually am going to be sharing with you guys two options at the end same exact rug but two different colorways which I'll pop up for you of course but I love this rug I think it has a very abstract look to it but it's still very clean in terms of some of the larger furniture pieces she does want to get rid of everything so I brought in this really great wood base sofa I thought the wood at the bottom tied in a little bit more of that just natural element that she's really going for for the peaceful vibe in there and then I also wanted to mimic that on the opposite side of the wall with a kind of wall mounted media console and this is just a simple one but then on top of our media console area you can use that as a styling section I think it's really cute to have a bunch of coffee table books across there or some vases some scattered decor just across the top to add some visual interest of course we need a coffee table in here so I wanted to do something with a little bit more of an organic shape so I did this kind of like rounded rectangle wood coffee table that's in a different shade I really love when it comes to Japandi design or kind of that wabi-sabi aesthetic is the mix of wood tones but still keeping them kind of in the same tone so like a warm wood but a lighter toned warm wood mixed with a medium mixed with a dark so you still have that warmth but it's just kind of cohesively meshed across the space in different shades I did a simple round mirror on top of this but you can also opt for some longer shelves if you wanted to add even more decor because I did notice that her living room prior didn't have a television in it so I didn't want to add that on the wall there's actually no lighting in this space so I wanted to add two options so I went ahead and did a table lamp on the media console section and then over on the sofa area to the right I did one of those two arm sconces that can be maneuvered around
around. That way you can kind of maneuver the light to wherever you need it. Right underneath that sconce, I thought it was a perfect spot for some greenery. So I added in this sparse tree in a pot, which I think looks really nice over there. And last but not least, I did add an accent chair to this space because I wanted something a little bit more structural and also adding a little bit more texture. So I found this great chair. It's very visually pleasing. It has like a really cool structure to it, very angular, but it has that rattan as well. And I like how it's just kind of freely placed in the room. And that guys wraps up this space. So we were able to take Mariah's living room before, which looks something like this, and turn it into a calming kind of Japandi style room, which ended up looking like this. And I absolutely love the outcome of this space. I hope Mariah, this gives you some inspiration for your very own space. And I hope it gives you guys some inspo out there as well. Of course, I'll link the items that I did feature in this space below. I love how the space is just really calming on the eye, extremely neutral, but our use of textures such as the wood, the fabric, the sofa, the different elements that we added gave it a bunch of interest in the end. And I feel like this is the perfect time to jump on into the portion of today's video that is sponsored by Capital One Shopping. Now, if you are an online shopper, listen up because this is definitely an extension you are going to want to download on your computer. I have it on mine and I have been loving using it so far. So if you've never heard of Capital One Shopping, I highly recommend you download it because it basically just saves you money with the click of a button. And how exactly does that work? Well, when you are shopping online on your favorite stores, whatever it might be, and you go to your checkout, there's actually a little browser extension you could download from Capital One Shopping that will actually provide you coupon codes to see if you're getting the best deal online. And these coupon codes are not ones that don't work or are just found kind of across the internet. These are actual coupon codes that will give you a savings. And not only do you instantly save money from the coupon codes you apply to your cart, but you also earn Capital One rewards points, which you can redeem for gift cards on the back end, which is really nice because it's like double dipping in your savings. And you guys, I'm not even done yet. So just wait for this one. You can actually compare prices on Amazon with other online retailers to ensure that you're getting the best price. So it's kind of like a price match plus item saving plus reward points mixed together and it's free. So it's really a no brainer. And did I mention that you do not have to be a Capital One card holder to use this? All you have to do is just download it using the link at the top of my description box below. It is 100% free and I have mine on both my computers, you guys. And it is just such a nice thing to have. You almost forget it's there and then you go shopping, you go to the checkout and it pops up and it's like, you can actually save some money. And it's like, wow, I could save some money for free. I didn't even need to do anything. So literally one click is all it takes to save. So make sure to avoid paying full price by using the Capital One Shopping extension, which I will link at the top of the description box below. And I did want to thank Capital One Shopping so much for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Our second space in today's video was sent over by Steven, who's part of the Lone Fox family, and him and his husband just moved into a new house from West Hollywood to Monterey Park. So we are kind of neighbors. I mean, I live kind of by West Hollywood, but we were neighbors. They moved a little bit. But something I did note is that if they are moving in this economy in Los Angeles, they must have a little bit of money. So I did go ahead and splurge a little bit on some items in this space because I kind of figured they might be able to splurge on some pieces that were pretty and I wanted to use in the design. So I hope you guys don't mind. Now they actually sent along a video, which I'll share in just a second here, but they said the home was built in 1954 and it has a bunch of architectural interest, which I love. Hi, I'm Steven. I'm Jesse. And we just moved here to our new home from West Hollywood. We're in Monterey Park. This is our first single family home and we're really excited to be here. This house was built in 1954 and it's got a lot of potential. You can see this really cool ceiling here. But as you can also tell by the wood paneling, it's a little dated and there are some things we would love to get your advice about. The first is actually this banister, which divides the room in half. Um, we're not really sure what to do about this other than the fact that we don't want it here. We were thinking planters, I'm not sure. Um, the other concern we have is lights. You want to talk about the lights? There aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> so any advice you could give Mr. Lone Fox, we would appreciate it. Thanks. So it kind of seemed like their main concern was the overall like outdated look of the space. They also it. were a little Thanks. concerned with lighting in there because there wasn't any. And on top of that, the railing as well. Now, I kind of didn't touch too much on the lighting factor in the design because I do think you might want to just go ahead and add some recessed lighting. I don't really know much about electrical or how you can run it, especially in a ceiling that's slanted like that because 
not a professional interior designer. So I wanted to leave that up to maybe a professional opinion on that side of it, but I did want to give them a design and also a alternate option for that railing. So the first thing we got to do in this space is update that wood paneling in the back. And I just think a fresh coat of a warm white paint across that entire wood paneling is super necessary. I just feel like there is so much wood happening in here and it's different wood. There's a different tone in the ceiling, walls and floor. So I want to eliminate the walls so the ceiling and floor have enough separation where the two tones don't look bad together. And I ended up opting for just a perfect warm tone and we're going to apply that on the entire back wall. I also wanted to swap out the curtain panels in here because I think the yellow ones are just not very cute in this space and I wanted to add some personality with the curtains. So I opted for kind of like a muted darker green color, which I think is going to add a bit of color because I'm going more neutral with a lot of the elements of furniture that I'm adding to the center. Now we can get more into the fun part of this design. And I actually want to do a very, in my head, it's like a Kelly Worsler inspired like seating area. So this is a more formal living room. So I wanted to mix a bunch of different furniture elements and styles and accent chairs and sofas that have different shapes to them in this section that all surround a large coffee table. So I'm just going to start throwing out a bunch of the different furniture pieces that I added. Of course, we're going to need a large floor rug to house everything. And I really want all the furniture to sit on top of the rug. So we want something that almost covers the entire floor in this section and really creates like a bold pop on the floor. So I found this linear one, which I think is really unique. And I love the just simple linear pattern on it. Now, in terms of the furniture, I wanted to pop a large coffee table in the center. So this is like a white lacquer coffee table that has rounded corners to it. If we're doing this fun seating area in this space that has such a grand ceiling and windows, I wanted to make each of the furniture pieces really stand out and almost be focal pieces surrounding each other. The primary sofa I wanted to use was this beautiful dark chocolatey velvet one that has such a unique like zigzag leg and just like a simple cushion across the bottom. I feel like this screams retro. It just adds such a unique visual interest to the space and then directly across from that, I wanted to accent it with some large leather accent chairs. Those styles of chairs I love so much and I thought this nice kind of leathery tufted chair would look great across from the velvet. So we're mixing a bunch of textures in this space. And we still have two other sides of the coffee table for furniture. So on one side I wanted to add like a rounded settee just to add a bit of shape to this space. And on the opposite side I did a really great wood slat bench with like some leather pads on top. So all around this is a really interesting sitting area but I think for this space Stephen, if you guys took this and turned it into like just almost like a showroom, like for interesting pieces, but it still is super comfortable. It's a place you can go and sit. It's a bit more formal. I did want to add a floor lamp in here and this chrome one was just screaming for this space. I thought it was so unique. It's like super modern, but also super retro at the same time. And I love the simple shape of it. And last but not least, just a wall art on that back wall there, a really large scale piece. I didn't want to pull anything exact because I feel like this can be DIY'd for sure at much more of a fraction of the price. So something that maybe you guys create together would be really fun. Last but not least, some plants. I did two large trees, one on either side of the curtain areas that are just really big, sparse, and kind of fill the space in. And I love, love, love the outcome of this room. The previous one was a little bit more outdated. It just had like a grandma -y feel to it. It had a very, very outdated look. And I feel like now it almost has this mid-century, very unique, retro, vintage revival aesthetic to it, which I've been loving so much. So this would be a space that I personally would absolutely die to see if you guys ever did anything like this. We also have to touch on their other dilemma, which was that railing section. And they said they wanted to remove the railing and maybe do planters there, which I personally probably wouldn't opt for something like that. Because to me, that kind of feels like an outdoor area, having like a long stretch of planters just I don't know something about that I just personally wouldn't go for so in that section I actually feel like you could still get away with railing there because I do think you're gonna need something to make sure no one falls down that couple feet that is dropped in the living room so I would go ahead and do more of like a mid-century style railing that has a simple black pole and then maybe like a circular shape or like a long oval that's repetitive across there and then for the columns I actually love the columns I feel like they're screaming art deco in some way so I would strip the wood color on this and actually go in and stain them much darker so a lot more of a darker toned wood with a black metal mid-century railing 
would look so pretty. And I also did change the door out. I added a black craftsman door just so you can see what a new door looks like as well because doors can update spaces like crazy. So Stephen and Jesse, I hope that you guys like these ideas that I came up with for your space and congratulations on your new home. It is absolutely amazing. I've been looking for a home in Los Angeles too and I know the struggle of how hard it's been going right now. So good luck to you guys um, on designing your space and I hope this gave you some inspo. But we have one more space to jump into and this is a bedroom. So our last space was sent in by Sienna and she says, Hi Drew, I've been watching your YouTube videos religiously. Thank you so much. I love your style and ideas. I really want to DIY this year and I just got a new apartment in San Francisco, but essentially I'm also like summarizing this. Essentially the bedroom side of the apartment and the living room side of the apartment are kind of connected, but there's a cased opening kind of in between the both of them and she needs some help essentially designing her bedroom space. So she did send along some photos of the bedroom space, which I'm going to pop up on the screen for you guys right now. Sienna also sent along her Pinterest mood board, which I looked through and she loves color. Like she loves color, like color absolutely everywhere. She really likes that kind of Danish pastel style with those really unique kind of retro furniture pieces, which is fun. So I wanted to incorporate that in the space as well. So in here, something that you might notice is that there's actually molding at like the top 70% of the room. So like 70% up the wall, there's a molding strip, which is actually very similar to my apartment. Mine has the same exact thing as well, but mine's fully just painted white. But I thought for hers, we can go ahead and just add a little bit of color to the bottom portion of that molding. So I opted for a warm white, maybe that dove wing color that we used in the last spaces wall, but just something that kind of separates the bottom portion from the top. Of course, the bed and nightstands are going to be the focal point of this room. So the bed I opted for was this really pretty kind of wavy headboard bed. And I've seen these online from designer stores and they're really expensive, but I found the super affordable kind of dupe version, which works great in this bright pink color. And I feel like it kind of channels that Danish pastel style. So I wanted to do this headboard and style the bed with just some nice pink and kind of warm sunsetty tone bedding in a linen finish, if you will. So that's what I did on the bed area. Now for the nightstands, I wanted to go with something a bit more simple because I actually wanted the table lamps on top of the nightstands to be the interesting element of said nightstand section. So the nightstand, simple wood ones, I found these online and I love how they kind of coordinate a bit with the floor as well. And then on top of here, I found these beautiful blown glass lamps that have this pink and white kind of stripey swirl pattern in them. I absolutely love them. Of course, we need a rug under the bed. So I have been dying to use a checkerboard rug in a space. I haven't got to use one in one of mine, a makeover I've done, or a virtual kind of what would Drew do. So I wanted to add one to Sienna's space and I love this rusty orange and white checkerboard rug. It's very, very, very trendy right now to have like a checkerboard rug, but I love it. You also might see that kind of sad boob light that's up at the top. Well, it's not actually a boob light. It's more of like a sports bra light, I think. Yeah, something like that. But <laughs> besides the point, it's not very cute. So I wanted to add in this bubble chandelier. It's kind of a cluster of a bunch of glass baubles. I actually saw Chris Loves Julia use these in one of her recent makeovers and I was obsessed with how it looked. On the furthest wall that has the two windows, I did go ahead and add some curtains on either side, some striped ones to go back to the table lamps. And I also feel like she's just a bold girl in general. So lots of pattern and just fun elements in the space. Then right under the two windows, I added two of these kind of boucle bubbly poofs. Again, very curvy silhouettes when it comes to the furniture, but I think that that's really making the space come together. And the last thing I forgot to touch on when we were talking about the light was actually also adding a large ceiling medallion. I feel like this apartment screams like Parisian loft for some reason. So adding that ceiling medallion will finish off that kind of Parisian aesthetic, but still tie it back to the vibe that she's going for. I just feel like it adds a nice little touch and it just makes it a bit more feminine as well. So those were all the changes I made to Sienna's bedroom. The before was just a little plain. She had just moved in. So of course there wasn't much in there. And the after is full of energy. I love how this space turned out. I think it's so pretty. I think my favorite element honestly is that headboard. I want to figure out how to utilize one of those in an actual makeover very, very soon. And if you are still sticking through props to you, because that was probably a long one, or at least I felt like I was filming for a long time. So let me know out of these three makeovers for three Lone Fox family members, which one was your guys' favorite. And of course, if you'd like to submit your space for what would Drew do, I will leave a link in the description 
description box below with all of the information. It just takes you right to my website that has all the info on how to submit your spaces and kind of like the best practices for taking photos and submitting videos and all that sort of stuff. So all that info will be on the link. And I will catch you all in my next episode of What Would Drew Do and my next video on the channel, which is going to be next week. So make sure to subscribe so you do not miss it. Catch you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.